majesty. Chapter number three, verse number 20 of the book of Revelation tonight. If you don't mind, and I, don't, I doubt you'll shout it out. I mean, you'll be so depressed you won't be able to sleep, but I'm not going to preach a long time tonight due to the fact, one, physically my voice, and it's not from preaching, it's just from this drainage. And then also uh, we're going to eat and fellowship after church. But I do want to give you something tonight. The Bible says in Revelation chapter number 3, verse number 20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. I want you for just a few moments to think about this passage of the Word of God because this passage of the Word of God is not written to somebody lost. Matter of fact, in this particular place in the Bible, this is where God is addressing the seven churches of the book of Revelation. He's coming through the talk here with the church of Laodicea, that church somewhat neither hot nor cold, this kind of lukewarm. And God said that he would spew that out of his mouth. We're living in a day where the church has got to make up its mind. Which side are you on? Where are you going to stand? What are we going to believe? And I believe that Jesus is standing at the door, and I want to preach on this, and he's looking for a church. I'll explain that in just a moment. Let's bow together and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the good number that's made their out, way out on this Sunday night. I thank you, Lord, for the great choir singing. And then, Lord, I thank you for Sister Natalie that sung and bragged on the Lord tonight. Lord, I'm glad you are majestic. I'm glad you're holy, worthy to be praised. And Lord, as we come to you tonight, God, the greatest institution on the face of this earth is a local church. But God, I believe that we have failed you and we ask you, Lord, to forgive us when we fail you. And we ask you, Lord, to touch us and to help us and to be with us. And we'll give you the glory. And we ask it all in Christ's name. And all of God's people said, Amen. you can be seated tonight. The Bible lets us know, and I don't want you to turn here, but I want to go through a couple things in the Bible real quick with you tonight. And I'll, I'll flip to these quickly and get them out. But I want you to notice in the Word of God in chapter number 5, the book of Galatians, in verse number 1, the Bible says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That word stand is used 11 other times in 11 other passages in the Word of God, and it means strength or being unmovable. Paul talked about it in Ephesians 6. Uh, literally, we get our word antibiotic or withstand from this very word stand that you find in the Word of God. I believe that is very important in the day we're living in for the church to stand for God. Now, let me say this. We can get in here and shout about our stand. We can get in here and praise God for our stand. Or we can go outside of the doors and we can stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. But we need a church that will stand for God. A church that will stand for God will be hated by the world. 
The world doesn't want a church to stand for God. The world wants a church to conform and to be what it wants it to be. The Rick Warren movement and the movements of our day are this. Let's go to neighborhoods and let's canvas them and let's find out what they want in a church and then let's make the church like that. But as I've said to you a few weeks ago, that's not what the church ought to be doing. What the church ought to be doing is having an influence on the world and saying this is where we are, this is where we stand, and we are not going to move from those very things that we ought to stand for. Honey, this ain't about haircuts. This ain't about long skirts and short skirts. This ain't about britches. This ain't about blah, blah, blah. A lot of stuff you don't even find in the Word of God. But I'll tell you what this is about. This is about taking a stand for morality, taking a stand for your children, taking a stand for what's right, taking a stand for the Bible, taking a stand for the truth. It's about taking a stand and freaking. I tell you this, as a man that's been doing this 31 years of my life, I am determined that I'm not going backwards. I'm not backing up for the world or anybody, but we have to stand for what is right. A church that does that will be hated by the world. A church that does that needs to be holy in its walk. Ain't no sense in standing for God if you're not going to be holy in your walk. Now, I'm, I'm looking forward to preaching on Samson because if I'm preaching on Samson, you'll find out that the main reason that Samson struggled so bad in his walk, uh, Stan, Samson didn't have no problem wanting to please God. He just wanted to please women too. He pleased God by day and women by night is what one author said that I was reading after about Samson. And that's the honest truth. That's what, that was his problem. But I want you to understand this and get a hold of what I'm saying. You cannot live for God part of the time and then decide you're not of the... But that book about, that, that, that chapter about Samson in 13 is about the Nazarite vow. And it's interesting because that vow is not separated from, but separated to. And there's a big difference. And you need to understand that. And so the deal is, as you and I need to get to the place where we are holy in our walk. That's not a haircut. That's not clothes. But that is an inside, holy walk with God that is real on the inside of your life. I believe in the distinguish between men and women. I believe in living holy. I, I believe if you wear things, you should be modest. I think we all agree there. I believe that we are to do right, but holiness involves more than that. We ought to have a holy presentation. Somebody say amen. We ought to be, uh, that means when people come in, uh, they ought to see that holy presentation. But when we are seen outside, we ought to be holy people. In other words, when people see us, they ought to realize, praise God, there's something different about that crowd. Amen. I'm talking about the church now. Stay with me a moment. We also ought to be honored for its worship. If we're going to worship God and be a church that stands in these days that has strength, we ought to be a church that's honored in the worship, and I believe that. Now go back to chapter 3, just a moment, of the book of Revelation tonight. And I want to give you a few things here as my voice I will work with me tonight. Revelation chapter number 20 and verse number 3, notice that Jesus is standing uh, on the outside of the church. He's, he's speaking to churches here in the Word of God. And I'm telling you, I'm convinced of this, that Jesus is looking for a church uh, that will let him in. Now, isn't that almost an asinine statement to make? Is, is that not almost a statement to make that just doesn't even seem like it makes sense? What do you mean that Jesus is looking for a church that he is welcoming? Can I tell you this? There's a lot of places can function just fine without the Holy Ghost, without Jesus. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you ever get around the real thing and get around the real power, you'll understand that we are nothing without the Lord. We are nothing without God and our church. Listen, I love Calvary Baptist. I love this ministry. I love what it is. I'm glad I'm your pastor. But I'm telling you, besides the good music we've heard today and the choir and besides our preaching and our teaching, but if we cannot do without the Lord being on the inside and we need God in this church. 
So Jesus standing on the outside of the church and he's saying, you ought to let me in. You ought to let me in. Church of Laodicea was so full of themselves. Other churches here, uh, they had some things that were strong, but some things had gotten weak. God said to them, strengthen those things which remain. Understand really about the only church, the church of Philadelphia. He didn't have a whole lot to say, but he just talked to them. But I'm telling you, don't lose your first love, he said. Understand the church needs the Lord inside of it. Amen. I love preaching when the Lord's present. I love preaching when the freedom of that liberty is there. Amen. Now watch this. The Bible says in verse number 20, that he seeketh, watch this. Behold, I said to the door, knock if any man hear my voice, open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. In other words, he is seeking. Matter of fact, you'll find that in John 4, 23, uh, where the Lord is seeking. I'll, I'll flip over that real quick, but in John 4, 23, I am convinced that the Lord is looking for a church that wants to do something for him. Somebody say amen tonight. Listen to verse number 23 of John chapter number four. Here's what it says. It says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But if you back up to verse 23 it says but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such. Can I read that again? For the father seeketh such to worship him. Can I say this tonight? That word seeketh in that chapter 4, verse 23, is a word that is like a continual search. He's seeking. He's looking for a place. I don't know about you, but I think Calvary Baptist Church ought to be a place where the Lord's welcomed. There will be a place that stands for God. Can I tell you what? Uh, besides your immediate family, the greatest family you have on this earth, and for some, their very family that you have on this earth is your church family. But friend, I'm telling you, you can have all the people, and you can have all the talent, and you can have all the ministries, but unless the presence of God is real, we're just sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Uh, we don't have what we need. We need the power of God in the church. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you traveled with me, you go with me. Some brother Woodage gets to do that some and, and some of these men that are out today. And I'm convinced, listen, I have pastors that'll say to me in churches, if God gets to moving, uh, preacher, we haven't seen anything like this. We don't really know what to do. You just handle it. You know, we take for granted every week. And God saves a couple young people and God shows up and God does the work. We take for granted that two kids drove here this morning. I talked to them uh, uh, lengthy after service this morning, but two kids drove here from Morrisville on their own, 17 years old, one going to the Navy, on their own, drove here because they heard about a church that cared about young people. Amen. I'm telling you, the world's seeking something, but I want you to understand that if we don't seek God and we don't ask God to help us, friend, all we're doing is coming in here and going through the motions. I do not want to go through the motions. I don't want to just come in here and preach a little sermon, have a few little things to five people go on the altar and say, praise God, what a good day. i tell you what I want. I want power to fall. I want the glory to fall. I want God to do a work, save people, change lives. I want people to live holy and godly and right. And I want to be a church where the Lord says, I can't wait to get in there. The scariest places you'll ever go into in your life is an empty church. You don't believe that's the case? Let me take you one night and put you in that other building. That, that floor squeaks and makes its own self squeak. I was in it one night in the dark and something fell on the back of it. I'm convinced a demon knocked over something. I had both my guns out like Yosemite Sam. I was ready to go, buddy. <laughs> Amen. You know why? Because when the people leave that building, the Spirit of God is not in that building. God's not in brick and mortar. People got an idea, oh God, no, no, no. The church, Jesus dwells in the body of the believer. He dwells in us. Hey, listen, it's on the inside of you. And the reason you have a good spirit in a church is when we get together, that spirit of God just runs together and we have good services. Amen. 
Let me give you these little thoughts right here. I think you'll like these. You probably heard them, but I think you'll like them. Jesus is looking for a church, number one, where his presence is welcomed. Now watch this. He should be invited to our gathering. He should be the intention for which we gather. In other words, when you come to church, you ought to come to church to worship him. And trust me, that's not why a lot of people go. I, I don't know why some go. I mean, some people come to church and I'm thinking, why are they even here? They don't even want to be here. Can't wait to get out. Don't act like they enjoy it when they are here. But for those of you that came and say, I want to get in the presence of God, can I say this? That's the intention every one of us ought to have. Praise God. Listen, you don't know what you might face this week. You don't know what you might deal with this week in your life. Boy, you need church today. You need that power. You need that help. You need God to give you something so when you get out of here, you can fight the devil and the demons of hell. God's looking for a church where his presence is welcomed. Listen, not only should we invite him into gathering, not only should he be in tension that we gather, but he also should be introduced to everybody that comes in. Sir, we would see Jesus. His presence is welcome. Number two, watch this. His person is worshipped. Do you know that the word worship is an old Anglo-Saxon word and it really literally means worth-ship? Other words, the word worship literally means worth-ship. Other words, he is worthy to be worshipped. He is worthy. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, the Lamb of God is worthy. Can I say this to you and I? He is worthy to be worshipped. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy. And listen, when we come to church, we ought not sit there and twiddle our thumbs or act like we can't wait to get out or we're bored to death. Listen, you don't have to be a shouter. You don't have to run an aisle. But you can come inside the church with an idea that I'm here today to worship God and that's my heart and that's my mind and he is worthy of our worship. Sometimes worship is you sitting there and taking in what God's given you and your heart's filling up. Your eyes fill up with tears. For others is shouting and praising God. For others, it's getting on an altar and saying, Lord, thank you for being merciful to me and good to me. For sometimes it's singing that song instead of Brother James leading the song and you're looking around, your songbook closed. It said, I'm going to open up them words and I'm going to sing and I'm going to brag on the Lord. Freak, can I tell you this, Brother James, and I hate to use these words together, but he is somewhat of a worship leader, even though we don't have that. I, I'm not using that terminology because these modern day garbage places, but that's what his job is, is to get up here and lead you in worship. You are to sing the songs of Zion. You are to lift up your voice and you are to participate in the worship of God. Amen. He's looking for a church where his person is worshiped. Bow down in adoration to him. Worship. His merciful grace. His magnificent greatness. His matchless glory. Thank you, Miss Natalie, for singing that song. That was right on target, wasn't it? Right on target, what I'm preaching. She didn't know what I'm preaching, but that's right on target. And I'll say this tonight, God's looking for a church where the presence is welcome, His person is worshiped, and then I'll say this finally, where the people are willing. God's looking for a church where His presence is welcome, His person is worshiped, but where the people are willing. Say, what do you mean willing, preacher? They're willing to obey the Spirit of God. Amen? The other night, I was preaching down for uh, Bethany Baptist Church. And I was preaching in the youth choir. Um, sang Brother Lance Carpenter's song, I Have Not Forgotten. And they were singing that and you could just feel the touch of God in that place. And I knew the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart. And always I don't know that. Sometimes I'm wondering if it's the Holy Ghost or something I ate. But I knew, I knew the Holy Ghost that spoke to my heart. So I got the preacher. And this is in middle service. No offer has been taken up, nothing been done. I got the preacher. I said, Brother Jeremy, come here a minute. And they'd already come down. The youth choir come down, sit in their seat. I said, don't you do me a favor. I said, I want you to, I want you to get that youth choir and get them back up. I want you to sing that song again. They let me preach right after they sing. Let me preach right to the scene. So he does that. I knew the Lord had instituted it. Honey, it broke out. I mean, God 
just sweat through that thing. We got out of church at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, we still in church. I ain't staying no church at 10 o'clock. You would if Jesus is there. Hey, Amen. Now, I wouldn't either if God ain't in it. I've been in some places trying to linger. If God ain't in it, I'm going to the house. Amen. I've heard a few testimonies before, and I just went on back to the motel. Amen. But I'm talking about when God's in it. Amen. And I'm telling you, God got in that thing. But you know what? You never know who's in that service. And there was a gentleman in that service I told you this morning. I have not forgotten. So what I, pre- I just preached a few moments, gave the invitation. And that gentleman, his family, had forgotten what God had done for them, had got away from God. And that family came down to an altar and it stirred so many people. And God began to move. And somebody come by and you know what they said to me? They said, preacher, thank you for obeying the Lord. Can I say this to you? And I'm not talking about what I did. I'm not talking about what I did. I didn't know those people were there. God knew those people were there. I had no idea. But I do know one thing. And I'm going to do this as long as I pastor church. I'm going to obey the God. I'm going to obey God in every service that I can. I'm going to make sure that we do exactly. We're not going to let a program get in God's way or, or some function get in God's way. Did you see a while ago after the choir got done singing how all of them were already walking because they already thought we'd do one song, then we go down and fellowship. What if God messes that up? What if God messes that up? What are we going to do? I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to obey the Lord. We're going to obey the Lord. God's looking for people that will obey the Spirit. Also, God's looking for a church that will operate by Scripture. Even if the world says it's different, we know that we operate by Scripture. Scripture makes it very clear about marriage, does it not? Scripture makes it very clear about abortion, homosexuality. The Scripture makes it very clear in the Bible. I didn't just start believing this stuff three weeks ago because I want to be a bigot. I was believing this stuff 30 years ago, 31 when I started out because I believe the Bible and the Scripture. And it just, see, I didn't just start believing this yesterday. Amen. So we need to operate by Scripture. Listen to this. God's looking for a church of people who are willing to offer a sacrifice. And I thank God that we have that around this place. Amen. I'm glad that we have people that are willing to sacrifice. I was thinking about today, I was following one of our buses out. And I believe, uh, I believe with all my heart, Brother Seth, I believe that was you that waved at me today when y'all was going out in the bus. Brother Kenny, I believe, were you driving it, I believe? And I want to say this, I appreciate people that sacrifice. There wasn't a lot of kids on that bus today. It wasn't a lot. But you know what? It was one life on there that God could change if somebody's willing to sacrifice. Amen. Amen. And then I believe God's looking for a church of people who are willing to occupy and service. Find your place. Get busy serving God. Remember I preached this morning on what will your testimony be? Remember I said this morning, you ought to have a testimony of salvation. You ought to have a testimony of service. And you ought to have a testimony as solid where people look at your life and they say, you know what? That person lives for God. Amen. Can I tell you this? I'm not interested in in creating Baptist clones. I'm not even interested in creating a Baptist clone church. I'm interested in a place when you open up the doors that the Holy Ghost is welcome and that God can move. But I'm also interested in a church that will stand. Amen. Can I ask you this? If we stand in Iredale County, are you going to stand with your pastor and leadership? Are you going to stand for the things in the Bible? Are you going to stand for what's right? If somebody comes up to you and says, can't believe that you've taken a stand like that, you're going to say, look, I took this stand a long time ago by believing the Word of God, and I'm going to stand for what's right. Let me tell you a little secret. I'm convinced of, I'm convinced of, I'm convinced this world will start backing off if God's people started standing. But they know the average church is anemic, no power. Matter of fact, the average church conforms. Conforms, becomes what the world is, so the world feels comfortable in its doors. I'm going to tell you the kind of church I want. I want a church where if you're a sinner and you come in it, son, you are holding on to seats, trying to climb up under a pew, feeling like that guy's preaching right at you, Son, sweat and heart about to beat out of your chest. Buddy, that's kind of I grew up in. I grew up in church, but when the Holy Ghost showed up, if you wasn't right with God, you knew you wasn't right with God, and you needed to get right with God. Oh, God, give us that kind of church again. Amen. Give us that kind of church again. 
I like it, don't you? Amen. Well, it's the Lord knocking on the door of Calvary Baptist Church saying, I want to do something. I believe He is. I just got to convince you that. But I believe He is. I believe God wants to do some things. Amen. I do. Amen. I don't ask this a whole lot, but I wonder how many of you pray for your church. Amen. And by the way, if you go to it and you criticize it, you ought to get out of it. Why in the world would you stay in anything you criticize? That makes no sense to me. If you don't like it, and I don't ever hear that. I guess everybody just loves every minute of it. But I'm just saying, listen, this, is, this, this church God put you in. Now I know it's His church. I know all the right things to say. You know, we're supposed to say, I know it's the Lord's church. But let's face it, it's your church. You go to it. It's where you go to church. That's my church. That's where I go. And so you're affiliated with it. You're recognized by it. And so because of that, you ought to want the Lord here. Amen. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I can preach a lot. And, and, I, and, and honestly, I, I, can, I can take my salary and just come in here and go through an hour and go into the house and say they can go and do whatever they want to do. I just can't do that. And the reason I can't do that is I want so much more from God. I want so much more from God. I'm not satisfied with just coming and going. There's too much potential around here for that. I want to see God do something big. Amen. Think about it. He's knocking. God wants to do something in our church. And if He's wanting to do something, let's pray and say, Lord, you're welcome here. We want you to work. Amen. Amen. We want people to leave here. Stand to your feet. We want people to leave here. And when they leave here, we want people to leave and not say, what a choir. Right? I mean, I, I hope they like it. I hope they sing somewhat on key. We, we, we want people to come and say, boy, that was a great Sunday school lesson. or Boy, that, that super church class was wonderful. or That puppy ministry was good. We want people to do that. We want people to come in and say they enjoyed the preaching. I mean, I, I, I'm a human being like anybody. I want folks to enjoy what they hear or at least be moved by it. I want my preaching to move you one way or the other. Amen. Amen. But I will say this. But when they leave here, the most important thing that we literally want people to say is what a Savior.